Well, CMS has some very important roles to play, both at the global and national level. At the global level, CMS brings together the range states of those um, species that are listed on CMS. And um, it makes sure that um, those range states, which are parties to the convention, then take measures to conserve the species and their habitats. So like CITES, um, CMS is a species-based based convention. And in fact, it is um, one of the, of the two only species-based uh, global conventions that um, there are. And it works very similar like CITES. CMS also has two appendices, Appendix 1 and Appendix 2, under which parties select specific species that are endangered or that they um, think um, should, uh, well, deserve or need um, concerted actions and cooperation to being conserved. Uh, so while Appendix 1 uh, lists those species that require very strict protection because they are endangered and that means they are threatened by extinction. Uh, Appendix 2 lists some species that only require cooperative action to be protected. Now, what actually um, constitutes a migratory species and therefore uh, is eligible for being listed on CMS is um, defined also by the convention. And um, here the convention takes a very different approach than the biological uh, definition from, uh, from, of, of mig migratory species. So the legal definition of migratory species is um, much broader than the biological definition. And uh, it uh, covers um, those uh, species um, um, of which we know um, travel for very, very long distances, like um, birds that um, migrate from Europe to Africa and vice versa, um, or uh, aquatic species that, um, like sharks or whales that um, travel through the different oceans. Um, it also covers um, terrestrial species that um, uh, may not be known as um, migratory species under the biological definition. So, for example, CMS um, now also covers uh, gorillas that um, uh, have transboundary populations, or it also covers uh, lions and uh, leopards and cheetahs, which again, um, one would not think that they are um, migratory species, but the legal definition of CMS allows um, the listing of those species um, as a migratory species under the convention. So uh, in summary, we can say that uh, CMS uh, provides or it gives a passport to those species to be able to travel freely uh, from one country um, to the other. And um, as such, this is a very important instrument. Um, we know that um, the IPBES um, report um, has shown that um, species are on a, on a very steep decline. And um, the reasons for that are uh, direct exploitation, but also habitat uh, loss. So both of these threats are the threats that are directly being addressed by, the, by CMS. And um, CMS does not only, or the parties of CMS do not only list those species under the convention, but in addition to that, they also adopt resolutions and deci decisions which address very specific uh, challenges and uh, threats um, that those species uh, um, encounter. So for example, um, when it comes to renewable energy, um, installations. Um, as we all know, wind, um, uh, wind turbines are very, um, are a big threat for uh, birds or bats um, that get caught in them and uh, then killed. Or um, the CMS COP has also uh, passed resolutions on how to avoid bycatch of um, certain species like uh, sharks and turtles, of course. Um, it also has some um, 
adopted um, decisions on addressing the use of um, species as wild meat, uh, because that is a very, um, very important um, threat to uh, a lot of um, African, but also Latin American uh, species. And um, it has um, started um, to look into the development of infrastructure, in particular linear infrastructure, which uh, cuts across um, species habitats and therefore uh, impedes the migration of those species. Um, but it does not only work through the listing um, of the species and the research and decisions. Uh, the COP also adopts some action plans on either specific uh, species or groups of species, which then uh, set out very specific uh, conservation measures that um, the parties that are range states of these species have to uh, implement. And um, of course, uh, the CMS uh, convention set up um, does not only consist of the um, conference of the parties as the uh, main decision-making organ of the of the convention, but it also has a scientific council which provides um, scientific advice to the parties, and um, that um, meets uh, on a regular basis and um, and provides the technical input and um, and ad advice for the for the um, convention. So, um, so much um, about the uh, global um, role of CMS um, with regards to the national role. Uh, it is very important um, that um, countries uh, can, um, when they interact with different uh, sectors at the national level, let's say the mining sector, but also uh, economic sector, tourism, and so on, that they can um, refer to the commitments that the country has made at the global level to then actually also take action um, at the national level. So um, it, uh, the convention through its obligations provides a very, very important and of course um, legally binding reference point um, uh, for the ministries of environment. And um, so it is um, important that um, the ministries of environment, which are the main focal points for the um, convention, are then um, also going out um, to the agricultural, fisheries, ministries, um, energy, and so on, and um, that um, they um, you know, say, well, this is what we have committed to, and therefore we also have to consider uh, species protection within these other sectors. So uh, the convention has um, certainly shown um, success because today um, there are 131 parties or countries that have joined the convention as a party. So we clearly see that there's a big um, interest of parties to be part of this convention um, and um, that they see also a lot of relevance in, in, uh, in being a party to that convention. We have also seen that in the number of um, both legally binding but also non-legally binding instruments that parties have concluded under the umbrella of the convention that um, they are making active use of this global instrument. So um, just to give you an example of some of the legally binding agreements that parties have concluded is the African Eurasian Waterbird Agreement, um, which I think you will also be briefed upon by a colleague of mine, but also one that is much smaller, which is the Gorilla Agreement um, that only brings together uh, the gorilla range states and at the moment um, eight of the ten range states have um, become party to the CMS gorilla agreement. And um, in, in total there are now seven legally binding agreements and 19 non-legally binding agreements which um, are called memoranda of understanding and um, these memoranda of understanding well some of the examples of such MOUs are one um, one that is also global, which is um, for the protection and conservation of the dugong. Um, then there is one for raptors. Um, we also have one um, specifically for sharks. And um, then there is a 
um, regionally, regionally uh, limited um, uh, MOU for marine turtles that covers the Indian Ocean and Southeast Asia region. Um, yes, so um, in addition to that, um, there are now about 179 species only listed on Appendix 1. So that shows that um, um, quite a large number of species um, do require the pro this strict protection that CMS uh, um, provides to them. Um, but also the, the trust and um, um, the, um, well, yes, the trust that um, countries um, bring to the convention in that they say we need to actually list this species um, for its protection. Apart, <clears throat> sorry, for, um, apart from the uh, from these official agreements, um, CMS parties have also started to create um, certain uh, species initiatives. So very recently, um, the parties decided to set up a, a joint um, African carnivals initiative um, joint between CMS and CITES. And um, that is currently um, developing a um, very dedicated program of work, which um, will um, we, uh, we, which hopefully we will um, combine with a sustainable funding mechanism that will then uh, support African parties in conserving their um, populations of lion, leopard, cheetah, and African wild dog. Then um, another, uh, project um, that is um, ongoing is under the Dugong MOU, um, which um, seeks to support countries in uh, conserving their seagrass um, areas. And um, that is um, also financed um, with um, CHEF funding, actually, and um, is one of the successes that we can uh, cite. And um, we have, um, at the beginning of this year, started a um, project um, specifically in the Eastern and Southern African region um, to support parties in setting up transfrontier conservation areas. Uh, and um, again, here we will um, take an ecosystems approach and um, try um, to support parties in managing multiple use um, areas so that um, the connectivity of these um, ecosystem is maintained and, and the species that occur there are uh, conserved. Um, some of the challenges um, that CMS faces um, is certainly that of um, the party's capacity to implement uh, the agreements and that is um, human capacity that is um, uh, the knowledge um, having you know scientific data at hand to actually uh, implement the convention but it is also <clears throat> uh, um, financing um, that is required to you know do um, well to, to carry out the implementation on the ground and um, something that um, CMS, um, as opposed to other uh, conventions, is missing is um, uh, a sanctioning mechanism or enforcement mechanism. So um, yeah, that, that has been some of, some of the challenges of CMS. Um, in terms of the membership of CMS, I think, um, again, um, to, to to reach a true, truly global um, coverage, um, we are also still um, lacking um, the membership of some very important countries, um, which includes the United States, but also uh, China, um, Japan, the Russian, Russian Federation. Um, yeah, just to mention some of the big countries. Yes, yeah, so that is really only summarizing what I have already mentioned. Uh, we can see that um, um, the lack of capacity or funding is, um, uh, of course, a uh, challenge to implementation. And um, regions that um, do have um, less resources are, of course, um, then also um, 
unfortunately not in a position to implement the convention as well as others. Um, but that said, you know, even Europe, which in certain parts, you know, has, of course, is much better um, equipped uh, to implement um, the convention from a technical and financial perspective. Uh, if the political will is not there, then um, that is obviously also a um, challenge to, to implementation. So um, partners are extremely important for the implementation of uh, CMS as just um, for any other MEA. And um, that is, um, and, and in particular, I think the collaboration of these different partners is really key to the successful implementation of CMS. Um, of course, governments are um, the well, the ones that have um, subscribed to the parties, so they hold the legal responsibility to also implement them. And they have to make sure that the required legislation is being um, passed by their parliaments to implement the convention. And um, uh, if um, required that also enforcement mechanisms are in place then to, to um, enforce um, the national legislation that they have um, passed to implement the convention. So of course they take a very key and central role uh, in, in, in that um, process. But um, scientific bodies or like academia is just as important because they have um, to provide, um, or we are reliant on academia to provide um, the scientific um, data, scientific information that um, that builds the basis for um, informed decision making um, by the convention. So um, we um, at CMS, um, the Scientific Council is um, composed of uh, uh, scientific representatives from each of the countries and um, here it is really uh, key that they also uh, contribute um, their knowledge um, to and, and advice um, to, to support the decision making um, of, the, of the convention. And um, then the third category was some NGOs, I think, IGOs? Yeah. yeah. So um, yes, then again, um, as uh, many um, governments, um, on the one hand, maybe lack resources to implement um, uh, their obligations on the ground. Um, partnering with um, IGOs or NGOs is very important. And um, at the same time, also NGOs and IGOs, um, you know, can raise awareness of um, issues um, that might not be, um, yeah, so so good <laughs> for the species, and um, that they bring. Um, to the attention of the governments, but also the convention um, where there is any non-compliance with, uh, uh, with, with the convention. Some other actors that um, are also uh, important for, the, for this collaboration is the private sector, um, the development sector, um, regional or global development banks, um, and um, any other uh, sponsors that um, can, can provide resources for implementation on the ground. And um, another group of um, um, uh, stakeholders, I think, um, are local communities and indigenous people. We have to, of course, um, look um, also at their um, interests, but also their needs um, and include them uh, in, in the implementation, as well as um, consider their interests in the decision making of the of the COP. And um, contrary to other conventions, CMS actually does not have an official mechanism that um, uh, takes um, into consideration the interests of uh, local communities and indigenous people. CMS has a number of tools that um, its parties have um, set up to monitor um, the implementation of the convention and also yeah, measure, measure, its, uh, measure it and enhance its implementation. So one of the um, instruments um, that is already enshrined in the convention text is the national reporting. And um, that is a um, triennial exercise 
um, by which um, the parties to the convention have to uh, submit um, their national reports um, uh, 180 days, I think it is, um, prior to each of the COPs, um, COP meetings um, and um, report uh, on how they have implemented um, the convention. And um, the, there is a specific national report format that um, is being developed um, that by uh, the scientists, but also um, the secretariat and then adopted by the conference of the parties, which um, the parties can then use um, um, and um, answer um, um, and that um, provides us with a very good overview of the implement implementation um, by each of the parties, but also um, at the aggregate level um, um, of the general implementation of the convention in all um, jurisdictions. Then um, a second um, tool that was only um, set up by the 12th meeting of the conference of parties is the national legislation program and uh, this um, is um, a um, voluntary program um, by which um, parties can uh, um, receive support to uh, actually implement um, the obligations that they um, have committed to um, at the national level so um, a questionnaire is being sent around um, to the parties and um, which they then you know fill in to show the level of implementation um, of the convention at the national level and um, it is then being looked at um, by the secretariat colleagues and assessed and um, if um, the level of implementation is um, um, not enough then um, the secretariat will support um, the party in developing uh, appropriate legislation um, that will um, effectively implement um, the, the convention at the national level. Also uh, set up by the 12th meeting of the conference parties is um, the review mechani mechanism, which uh, essentially is a compliance mechanism, only that it does not really have very strong sanctioning uh, measures. So this review mechanism allows um, parties, but also NGOs and the secretariat to um, bring up um, issues of non-compliance in a specific um, party. Um, and um, bring it to the attention of the standing committee, which will uh, act as the review uh, committee for that specific case. And um, together with the country um, in which um, the case um, uh, has arisen, um, the standing committee will then um, develop some um, solutions to address the issue. So um, rather than, you know, um, trying to punish um, um, a country for not um, complying with the convention. This is a facilitative and ad non-adversarial approach to help uh, countries um, to be compliant with the convention. So far, <clears throat> um, we have not um, actually had a case um, to bring to the attention of the um, standing uh, committee in its capacity as, um, as the review committee. Um, <clears throat> but um, we hope that this mechanism is being used um, at some point um, by any any stakeholder. And um, a last um, a last um, tool that um, we also um, use um, is the strategic plan, um, which um, also you know has very specific targets and. Um, um, parties when they report um, in the national reports, uh, then they also show of how they have uh, achieved the certain targets that are set out in the strategic plan. Um, so first of all, I should say that um, it's not actually always easy to um, receive the national reports um, from the parties. Um, sometimes it again may be an issue of capacity. Um, sometimes maybe, yeah, 
there are other reasons, um, but um, we have never unfortunately received um, the national reports of all parties, of all countries that are party to the convention. So I think on average, um, we receive for each of the um, COPs um, between 80 and 95, something like that, um, national reports, which is a bit of a, of a shame. Um, yeah, but we are working also on better supporting parties in preparing the national reports. Then um, we are analyzing the um, responses that we re receive um, for these national reports and then prepare sort of an, an, an overview report on very specific um, issues um, that are being um, addressed in the national reports to, um, you know, provide an overall assessment of um, how the convention is, has been implemented. The Secretariat can also use the national reports as a source of information to trigger a case um, in the review mechanism. Um, yes, but um, this um, we have not um, yet done. Yeah, this has definitely been very important also for CMS and um, because it really speaks also to the heart um, of the convention. Um, the objective of the convention is really to address some um, the causes of, um, of zoonosis, um, you can say, because um, um it um yeah it, it seeks to tackle the direct use of endangered species but also um it seeks to um ensure that um the connectivity between ecosystems and habitats habitats is maintained and you know these are exactly the reasons and causes for um zoonotic diseases um to spread on humans um so um um yeah, the, you know, while CMS, of course, also acknowledges that um, uh, the meat of wild animals uh, might be a very important source of protein for some uh, local communities and um, in indigenous peoples, um, it is very important that um, this use um, is sustainable. And um, at um, the moment, the current um, trade um, is um, definitely not sustainable. So um, we um, also work with partners to um, address that issue, um, to make sure that um, um, the, um, um, the, the, well, the, that the consumption of, um, you know, wild, wild meat um, remains um, within the local communities and that um, wild meat is not being transported from the bush to the um, cities where it is then being consumed as um, luxury goods. Um, yeah, so that is um, certainly very important for the convention and um, um, bats um, um, of which um, very many are listed on CMS um, have obviously also been one of the species that um, um, were highlighted in this um, pandemic. Um, as po possibly being um, the animals that have um, transmitted the disease to humans. And um, CMS has um, informed um, the public and raised the awareness of public um, that um, bats are uh, completely, um, well, that as long as bats are being kept uh, in their environments and um, not being um, uh, interfered with uh, in any way, um, that they are actually um, completely harmless and um, not um, any source of um, zoonotic diseases. Um, the same, of course, um, with uh, gorillas um, that um, are also um, thought of um, being potential uh, transmitters for um, um, zoonotic diseases and um, again, um, CMS uh, is, you know, raising awareness that um, only as their habitat is being encroached upon by people, um, the, um, the, the, the opportunities for transmission actually occur. Uh, 
Um, I think um, my main message is, um, first of all, it's great that um, they are participating in this course because um, this is certainly very important and um, I'm sure will help them a lot with um, implementing uh, CMS. But um, also that um, we are, the CMS Secretariat is ready and, um, you know, is um, willing and, um, and um, um, yeah, in the, in the situation to also support them if they need any um, support. Um, so please uh, come and, um, yeah, contact us. We are ready to help.